Before you judge a tank, drive a mile in its tracks. To defeat any tank, you must know its weaknesses, and nothing reveals them better than experiencing them yourself. In this video, I'll talk about loved and hated USA Heavy Tank Jumbo, what problems it faces and how they can be solved. That will also give you an idea how to use Jumbo's problems in your advantage when you face it on battlefield. So how to play M4A3E2 Jumbo? As usually, Uncle Sam provides you with a big variety of shells, but in practice you will use only two of them. And they are different enough to be both useful, so playing Jumbo involves a lot of switching between these shells. APHE, that contains over 60 grams of TNT equivalent of explosives, can penetrate only up to 103 mm when target stands right next to you. That is the shell that you want to use whenever possible because of its damage, but very small penetration means that you won't be able to use it so easily. Even at close ranges you must aim for medium tank weak spots and at long range only very soft targets can be damaged. When you need more penetration you will load APCR shells. They can penetrate up to 40 mm more, which is significant amount compared to previous shells. Since those are subcaliber projectiles, their mass is smaller and additionally there is no explosive filler. So it has very poor post penetration damage and only crew and modules directly behind impact point will be affected. But even increased penetration will require you to aim for weak spots and keep in mind that APCR are more affected by armor sloping, so aim for flat surfaces, otherwise penetration will fall to APHE shells level. Reload time of 5 seconds with a screw encourages you to switch between these two projectile types whenever you feel the need. Now opposite thing, when enemy shells hit you. This tank is all about protection, and because of that we'll get into details here. It is difficult to damage it anywhere frontally. Hull's bottom has few plates and all of them are over 100 mm thick. Even if penetrated, there is transmission which will absorb all the damage. Higher, hull is made of two armor plates, resulting in over 100 mm thickness in total. And additionally, they are placed under 48 degrees angle which gives it significantly increased effective armor thickness. That means the vast majority of enemy shells cannot go through. And finally turret that has 177mm gun mask on it, which is almost impenetrable at its battle rating. Though it doesn't mean that you can stand in an open for a long time. Its machine gun is well known weak spot. There is only one armor plate that can be penetrated even by weak shells. It is also well known that it's quite difficult to hit, but difficult doesn't mean impossible. If shell enters your tank here, you are very likely to be one-shotted since this weak spot is located almost in the middle of a tank, that means all five capitalists are likely to be knocked out at once. So even if it's difficult to hit, especially at long ranges, you should put some effort in hiding machine gun. It is very effective to put some bushes here so opponents will not be able to identify machine gun so easily, but nevertheless it will work once or twice because they will correct their fire after each shot depending on what hit cam shows and sooner or later they will hit machine gun. So if you are caught in the open, even with bushes over your weak spot, move your hull all the time to make their task more difficult. Even when one of your tracks is damaged, it might be more beneficial to stay in motion and not being hit than standing still and let your tracks to be fixed. Side armor is better than medium tanks have, but it's nowhere near as impenetrable as your front so you will be in trouble if someone gets to your side. Generally, just like in front, top is the most protected area. Turret can withstand average projectiles. Hull's side plate is 70mm thick with no slopes. 
that will be a massive zone where majority of your opponents can penetrate easily. And close to the ground, right behind tracks, you have only 38mm plate. And most importantly, your ammunition is stored here. So even as PAAs with armor piercing bullets can destroy you if they get to your side. That is also a reason why you shouldn't angle your tank when there is nothing covering your tracks. So you face a dilemma when standing in the open. When tank looks straight at opponents, you can be killed through machine gun. When you angle the tank, chances to be hit there reduces, but instead it increases likelihood to be destroyed through lower side plate. That means even Jumbo needs to take cover. The best way to do it is playing hull down. Gun's depression of minus 10 degrees works great in combination with the fact that weakest armor is a tank's bottom. As long as bottom is covered, you should be a tough target with few exceptions when really powerful weapons are fired, such as large high explosive shells, heat fin stabilized ammunition or some German tank destroyers with their insane penetrations. What is really nice is that despite all this heavy armor, turret's rotation speed remains the same as all Shermans have, 24 degrees per second. That allows you to react to incoming fire as fast as any medium tank could. Tank also accelerates very well on even ground. The only thing that will significantly limit your mobility is low maximum speed limit of 35 km per hour. And as usual for heavy tanks, even powerful engines struggle when they need to take all this mass uphill. Jumbo also has stabilizer, but it only works at low speeds. Nevertheless, you can shoot accurately when moving on first gear. And most importantly, it allows you to keep hull in motion while you fire, so enemies have hard time hitting your machine gun weak spot. Because your frontal armor will give you confidence, you will soon change your behavior and start to play more aggressively, ignoring cover and pushing forward alone. That is likely to result in some sad scenarios. You are very likely to push too deep, sometimes even to enemies respawn without allies at your sides. Because when you go alone, most of the time you get shot at your side plate by enemy you didn't notice and passed by. Additionally, because of inability to penetrate opponents reliably, you automatically will try to get closer to enemy tanks, so your shells keep more penetration and it's easier for you to aim at weak spots. But at the same time, it's easier for faster tanks to get to your side as you in general are less maneuverable than others. Sometimes even being close is not enough to damage opponent, especially dangerous as Soviet medium tanks that can drive towards you, ricocheting all your shells. Even stationary T-34 is difficult target, and when they are in motion, it's even harder to hit their weak spots before you get surrounded. Because of your small penetration and others' inability to damage you, duels might take some time. Markers on minimap will attract attention of other players, and since you can effectively tank shells only frontally, there is a big chance to be hit at your side by someone coming from another part of a map. All these situations involve being hit somewhere else than frontal armor. So keeping your hull in the direction of enemy tanks should be prioritized over shooting them yourself. Overall, just like Soviet KV-1, which also depends on its armor and which review can be found here in notifications, a lot depends on what opponents you are facing. When you are up tiered, you face tigers and panthers that can penetrate even your gun mantlet at close ranges. And when your vehicle is among strongest, you usually drive forward, killing everything on your way, and then just stand at enemy's respawn until they lose all their vehicles. That might mean that success in battle often depends on your luck rather than skill. In arcade, which usually favors heavy tanks, fights become more deadly at close ranges. 
Even if you covered your machine gun with bushes, opponents can still see where that weak spot is when penetration indicator turns green. So it's even more important to move or hide your hull. And at long ranges, it might take ages to destroy someone as you cannot penetrate anything that has at least some armor. On the other hand, that same indicator helps you as well, so Jumbo feels more than comfortable, as long as you don't let enemies surround you or expose yourself under fire of tank destroyers. I will rate the vehicle 8 layers of frontal armor out of 10. It is the most protected tank at its battle rating, almost invincible when hull is hidden. Often enemy opening attack will do no damage and will just reveal their position so you can kill them. Not getting damaged also lets you to stay in the middle of action longer so tank's gameplay feels more active. The only problem is that it might not be so easy to destroy armored targets and even increased penetration of APCR shells sometimes is not enough. Nevertheless, it's one of the most fun heavy tanks that definitely will give you feeling of invincibility, at least sometimes.